Meanwhile, as days go by and dozens in Miami are still unaccounted for, religious authorities are going increasingly concerned that burial ceremonies will not be performed as they're supposed to. Joining me to discuss is founding rabbi at the Tel Aviv International Synagogue, Rabbi Ariel Constantine. Rabbi, thanks so much for, for joining us. Now, typically, Jewish burials must be performed within 24 hours of death out of respect for the deceased. But are, are there extenuating circumstances? No, of course there are. First of all, of course, our hearts and it goes out to the victims and the families who are suffering this terrible, terrible tragedy. It's completely heartbreaking. And in this process, you want some kind of a closure, some uh, ceremony that you can put the uh, victims to bed and then to bury them properly. Unfortunately, under these circumstances, it's very, very difficult. Jewish law prefers out of respect to the deceased to bury as soon as possible. However, but it's also out of respect to gather whatever parts you can find as challenging as that is. And we have many organizations that do incredibly wonderful, difficult work to gather and mine through this, the rubble to bring together what they can, both for the sake of bringing closure and proper Jewish burial, and also for identifying those who passed in order to enable those who are married to them perhaps to be freed and be able to remarry again and not have an uncertainty or an unknown whether they passed or not. So this is very, very difficult, very holy work. And there, of course, are these extenuating circumstances for which this requires additional time. So, so what are some of the best practices in this situation when it comes to uh, searching amongst the remains and, and, as you said, gathering body parts in some cases? Right, so it's a slow, painstaking process. We went through this, unfortunately, in 9-11. Uh, when the, the tragedy, there was, you know, digging through the rubble and finding little by little a part and do, using DNA analysis to try to uh, identify the parts and to gather whatever we can and give that a par proper burial. And there's little, little that we can do other than sift through and, and try to provide comfort for the family and honor to the deceased. And as long as that takes safely and thoroughly, that's what we're going to do. All right, now I understand that today is coincidentally, actually it's a fast day in Judaism in honor of the breaching of the walls of Jerusalem ahead of the destruction of the second holy temple. What lessons could you maybe use from that tradition in relation to Miami and the collapse there? I think it's definitely a, a difficult time for the Jewish nation in general, starting from the, uh, the three weeks begin today, the 17th of Tammuz, leading all the way up to Tisha B'Av, the most tragic and difficult day of the Jewish calendar where we commemorate all the challenges and all the um, tragedies that have befallen our nation. So today on a fast day, it is especially we relate as a nation, as a people to the pain and suffering of those who have uh, lost victims or are uncertain that they lost victims, those who have been injured. And uh, on this day, it's a not a good day in Jewish history for many, many tragedies that have happened, not just the breaching of the walls of Jerusalem, the breaking of the tablets, the, uh, the burning of a Torah scroll and various other tragedies that have happened from the beginning of the three weeks today until Tisha B'Av. So we pray that there should be a better time, that God should have mercy on our people and on the world and, and provide comfort for those in need. And uh, hopefully we can uh, see better times. All right, amen. Rabbi, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you.